And last week's stronger than expected jobs report has been resetting expectations on rate cuts. My next guest, who has been calling for a downturn for some time, is waving the white flag to some extent. He says his timeline was wrong, but it doesn't mean we're out of the woods. Let's bring in Michael Darda. He's the chief economist and macro strategist at Roth Capital Partners in the House, in the which house. I should add is because you're in the direct path of the hurricane. So part of this is, is I mean, a lot of people are really leaving, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. So this this looks like a pretty dangerous situation, uh, you know, uh, you know, for Florida. So, you know, we just went through this two years ago with Hurricane Ian. And, you know, so fingers crossed, we have a lot of uh, friends and, and family that are, you know, yeah. in that area. So we're, you know, we're pretty worried. We're watching it hour by hour, uh, for sure. So let's go back, kind of revisit what's been going on on a, on a macro level. Here's the thing that I don't understand. We look at kind of um, nominal growth trends in the economy, which were red, red hot when we had, uh, right before the Fed hiked, when we had mm -hmm. all the stimulus and all the efforts to get us through the economy. Now they've slowed way down, which would suggest the Fed should be cutting and the economy should be slowing. And yet we don't experience that right now. Is the lag just longer and longer and longer? Or is something different going on in this economy right now? Yeah, that is really the question here, right? Because if you if you take a look at this recovery, we've had a lot of volatility on the demand side and the supply side. Uh, so for two years, really, the you know, the, the first part of the recovery we were seeing double digit, high single digit, nominal GDP growth. Right. Nominal growth is not really affected by supply side shocks. The composition, but not the level or growth rate. If you look at the productivity statistics, we had two years where productivity averaged, you know, in, in, in the minus category, yeah. negative productivity growth. In the last five quarters, we're running close to 3% on average. So the supply side is recovering while the Fed's tightening has slowed but not cratered the demand side. And that's really the immaculate disinflation story that has gotten financial markets so excited. So the question here is, is this it? Did the Fed just simply succeed right. and, and they nailed it? Uh, or are the lags just longer? Are there some risks out there? I think, unfortunately, markets and a lot of economists are getting swung a around by these monthly jobs figures, which mm -hmm. have been a bit volatile, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the July jobs data that came out in early August set off recession alarm bells. At that point, we had the unemployment rate up nine-tenths from the cyclical trough in 2023, unprecedented outside of a downturn developing. And now two jobs reports later, we pull back two-tenths on the unemployment rate. We get some big upward revisions and a surprise to the upside in the headline figure figures for payrolls. And now it's like, oh, the Fed shouldn't be cutting rates at all. Right. Maybe they should <laughs> mothball the entire enterprise. Let's just take a deep breath. I think we're going to need some more data. Um, it's just so strange. And so I, I, I think about what's different. I would say three things may be different this time. So maybe the economy needed to shrink, quote unquote, post pandemic, but you know, it's still fine. So so we're getting these recessionary signals from ISMs and we're getting signals from LEI and all stuff, but it doesn't matter <laughs> because we're just kind of right sizing. The other thing is fiscal is literally the fiscal stimulus just um, so strong and the deficit so large. And that's what Rick was alluding to with higher interest rates, that that's kind of the, the wild card here um, or immigration is this massive populace, population surge, which is where a lot of those job gains are going. And it's been hard to get a clear read on what's happening in the labor market because of that, also making it harder to figure out what's, what's taking place. Yeah, I think of, of all of those, I mean, so the immigration push and the growth um, in the labor supply, I think certainly helped to take some of the steam out of wage growth. And where you get a lot of layoffs is when top line growth, nominal GDP falls below the cost structure, hmm. wage costs, you know, um, the growth rate of wages. And then you see a lot of layoffs. That's typically a recession. Uh, kudos. You know, this is Scott Sumner's musical chairs model, the business cycle. So you should have Scott on <laughs> if you want to do an academic you know, market monitorist roundtable. Um, so that's one way in which the supply side can help if nominal growth is slowing on the back of tighter monetary policy. That it can bring wage growth down enough that you don't have to trigger layoffs. Yeah, because nominal top line growth is still you know running in the in the low fives, and, and wage growth is below that. So there hasn't been a big impetus for layoffs yet. Which yet. is great, and we hope it keeps going. I mean, Claudia Sam was pointing out this week, though, the pace of hiring has slowed to levels consistent with a seven percent unemployment rate. Yeah. Do you see anything? And I would hope that. It 
it would be rate cuts. I mean, for you bring down the cost of borrowing for small businesses, they could start to expand again. I mean, could that kind of help work us through this period? Yeah, I, I, I think it would be a mistake if the Fed just mothballs the, the rate cuts here. I mean, the market is pricing in a, a slower path in terms of the Fed's easing. And even, you know, and with that, you know, the bond market inflation expectations, five-year horizon for tip spreads, barely 220 basis points. Is that the Fed losing control of the yield curve or bond yields? I mean, let's put aside the fact that they don't control the long end anyway. But if they're doing it right, you're not going to crater inflation expectations. You're not going to have inflation expectations soar like they were going into 2022. So I would say the Fed should should be monitoring some of those forward looking indicators and then and then we'll watch the survey based weakness in September for a lot of the labor market data was concerning. Hmm. And we saw that in, in the jolts numbers for hires and quits, saw that in the conference board data, the NFIB data yesterday in terms of jobs hard to fill, you know, there's. They're definitely I don't think we're out of the woods here to, in, in terms of the, the labor market is just perfectly steadied. So so we're going to need some more data, and, I think. And just when we need that data, we're going to have the hurricane exactly. effect where it's going to it could take a month or two to actually figure out once again what the clear read is, uh, exactly. which is amazing. Uh, Mike, thanks for coming. It's Thank good you. to see you in you person. Too. Appreciate your time. Michael Darda. With